All right, we're live and welcome to septictank.co.uk live broadcast. All right, so if you've never joined me before, my name is Jason from septic tank. uk. Okay, there we go. So if you want free help, if you want free advice regarding the septic tank ban that comes into force on the 1st of Jan 2020, maybe you're looking to repair or replace your septic tank system. Maybe you've bought a house that's got a septic tank and you don't know quite what to do, whether it's okay, whether to replace it. Maybe you're looking to buy a house that needs a septic tank. Whatever your situation please if you want free help free information then just visit septictank.co.uk and i will help you for free and uh, my name is jason by the way okay so um today on bank holiday weekend i thought i would just discuss some really basic really basic um uh, answer some very basic questions that you've been asking me of late. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Okay, and um, one of the most popular ones that I get asked is this. What is a septic tank? Now, that's a very, very good question. Okay, and so we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up nice and slowly, but hopefully you'll understand by the time... This broadcast has finished what a septic tank is, what are the best septic tanks to, to, to buy, and I'll also show you how to install it. Okay, so let's start with the first question. What is a septic tank? Well, in the cities, right, all the houses that people live in are connected to main drainage. So if you live in a city, even in some rural places, it's not just the city, but the point I'm making is, is that when we've had a bath, when we've used the dishwasher, turn the washing machine on, when we flush the loo, we never give it a second thought because all the waste goes down the pipes and flushes down into the sewers. If you live in London, then obviously you're familiar with the London sewers, but everywhere has got sewers and then they make their way down the sewers and they end up in a water treatment plant and it treats all that horrible sewerage kind of dishwasher washing up kind of bath water into safe clean uh, wastewater all right so most houses as i said are connected to a mains drainage however there is a small percentage of people up and down the country when i say a small percentage uh, probably like 5%, which equates to maybe about 4 million people in the UK who are not connected to the mains drainage. So if you're not connected to the mains drainage, what can you do? Well, this is so. I'm now going to explain to you what a septic tank is. All right, so let me just wipe this off. Okay, and so the perfect scenario, I think, first of all, is to just draw. Well, first of all, look, I'm going to. That's some grass, all right? If you wondered what that green line is, it's some grass, okay? And um, let's do a house now. I remember the houses used to look like this on play school. <laughs> Don't know if you remember play school. Maybe I'm showing my age. <laughs> All right, so here's a house, okay? And there's a chimney. All right, so this is a typical house in the country that's not connected to the mains drainage. Okay, so what will happen is you'll have your dishwasher, You'll have your bath, your shower, your B day. Remember B days? Um, sinks, washing machines, <clears throat> uh, 
and toilets, all right? We'll just stick with that for now, all right? So all that, all that produces waste water. Okay, so we'll call that waste water there, okay? So all that waste water will leave the property and come out of a pipe, right? And now I'm gonna draw you a picture of the septic tank, okay? So the septic tank will look something like Something like that, for argument's sake. So, in fact, what I'm going to do for illustrative purposes, although that is the shape of septic tanks now, if I make it a bit deeper, I can also show you how the septic tank works, okay? So let me just make it a bit, bit deeper for you. There we go, okay. So that's a typical brick-built septic tank. Okay, so there you go, I'll put underneath, look, septic tank. So all the wastewater from the property will make its way down the pipe here. Okay, and then, so here it goes, look, there's all the wastewater. And then it will enter the septic tank, okay. And it will fill up. It will fill up the septic tank. Now, in that wastewater, in the septic tank, you get all kinds of things. You'll get you'll get toilet paper, sanitary towels, baby wipes, carrot peelings, tomato peelings, human hair, human skin, fat grease and sludge. And all of that floats round and round and round the septic tank. And some of it will settle onto the bottom and become sludge on the bottom of the floor of the septic tank. So that's basically how a septic tank works, okay? So you've got raw sewage in there, all right? That's like soup, soup, okay? And every septic tank in the world will have a soak away connected to it. So if I put your soak away here, so in this instance, we're going to call this a soak away. We'll call it a soak away pit. In fact, what I will do I'm going to put the word soak away pit underneath. And I can show you how the soak away works. Okay, so <clears throat> just drop my uh, my cloth there. So, okay, so all the wastewater from once it builds up into the septic tank will reach a certain level, which is about here. Okay, and then all this wastewater will make its way down here, and then go into the soak away and fill this soak away pit up. Now I'm using look, there's different types of soakaways on the market. I'm just keeping it really, really, really simple for now. I just want to show you the principle here. So don't get hung up that it's a soak away pit. Okay, so you'll have a septic tank and you'll have the soak away pit. Now, in between the septic tank and the soak away pit, you will also have a manhole chamber that gives you access. So if it gets blocked, Anywhere along there, you can rod it, All right. or it should have an access chamber anyway. So all the wastewater will make its way down here into the soak away pit, and then it'll just slowly and gently soak away into the soil. So that is basically right, what a septic tank is and how a septic tank works. It's as simple as that. So, now, let me te tell you now, all right, so now I've shown you what a septic tank and soak away are. Let me now show you if you're looking to replace your septic tank, if you're looking to repair your septic tank, 
or you're looking or you're buying a house with a septic tank, let me show you two types of common septic tanks on the market today. All right. So first of all, these are the two most common septic tanks. You've got an onion shaped septic tank. And you get a bullet shaped septic tank. Now, <laughs> as I said, it's very hard to talk and it's very hard to write. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But um let me do that again. There you go, that looks a bit better. <laughs> I was doing great at art at school. But the point is, I'm showing you the contrast between the two septic tanks that you can buy on the market today. All right. So the first tank here. So tank, have I got any room there yet? I have. So tank one is an onion tank. They call it an onion tank because it looks like an onion. It looks like an upside down mushroom, whatever you want to call it. It's called an onion tank. And typically, typically an onion tank can be anywhere from nine to about 18 foot tall. Hell of a size tank they are. A hell of a size tank. They're made of fiberglass and um, they were very popular in the, in the 80s when they first came out, but that's typically what an onion tank looks like, okay? Tank two. Over the years, technology has moved on. And these tanks are called bullet septic tanks. They're called bullet septic tanks because they're really shallow, right? They're literally two thirds shallower than the onion tank. So typically, whereas you need to dig a hole, right? Nine to 18 foot hole on the bullet tanks, it literally, man alive. Well, let's work this out. Okay, so um, you're looking anywhere from like four to six foot tall. So you can see that there's a big difference between the two. These are very strong, they're very light. Another difference between the two is on the onion ones, You have to concrete them in. Otherwise, the manufacturer will not warranty them. And you have to concrete them in for many reasons. Number one, because they're made of fiberglass, they're very fragile. So they can crack, they can puncture. They also, if, you, if you're not careful, if there's a tiny bit of water moisture in the ground, around the tank, it just pops them straight up out the hole. Next, you put it in next morning, you go to go, and then you'll see it sitting on top of the lawn. You think, the heck's going on? That's because they're just very light, they're very bulbous, and they just lend themselves just popping out of the ground. So you've got to concrete them in, okay? You, you, you have to concrete them in. There's no way around it, all right? Otherwise, as I said, the, the in fact, it's a law from the councils now that you've got to concrete them in. They made the manufacturers put it, stipulate that unless they were concreted in, they wouldn't warranty them in. Then if you live in waterlogged places, you've also got to put straps. Well, I suppose they look like human braces, you know, braces that they wear. Okay. And at the bottom here would be a lintel or two lintels. And you've got to use straps. So that basically is the onion tanks. Most people don't go for onion tanks now. If you're tempted to go for an onion tank because it's a couple hundred quid cheaper than the bullet tank, which they, they can be, you know. But the trouble is they cost an extra 1,500 to two grand to put in because the concrete alone is six, seven, 800 quid and you've got to have a bigger digger and it takes longer and you've got to use more juice. So although you may save a couple of hundred quid up front, you'll lose at least a thousand to 2,000 quid on the back end by the time you've installed it. It's just technology's just moved on. The bullet tanks, the reason they're so popular is because they don't need concrete, right? You can just put them straight onto 
the soil, the chalk, clay, whatever you've got there, <clears throat> and you just literally backfill with three to four ton of granular material. And um, job done. It's as simple as that, really. That's why the um, bullet septic tanks are just uh, just so popular. That's the rib design. You'll see they come with a rib design. That's because they're made from rotor molded injection plastic. You can literally drop them from a third story building and they just bounce but they're very light very strong tanks so if you're gonna go for a septic tank if it was me for no other reason than the reasons that i've said i'd go for a bullet septic tank every single time uh they take about an hour to install right there's no concrete needed with them uh concrete shallow dig They're strong, they're robust, um, <clears throat> they don't pop out of the ground. Um, uh, poor man alive. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Oh, yeah, and they're a lot cheaper to install. Literally, you'll save, I kid you not. <sighs> Flipping heck, oh, man alive. I mean, I've been installing for 20 years now. I reckon it's fair to say you'll save at least, at least, depending on the size, the bigger they are, the more that you'll save. You'll save anywhere at least from 1,200 to 1,800 pounds savings by putting one of those in. Oh, I almost forgot. On the onion tanks, another bad thing with them is the depth of the outlet pipe. Now, on these, the outlet pipe has to start, right, very low outlet pipe. So the outlet pipe starts at a minimum of three metres, uh, of a metre deep, not three metres, sorry. One metre deep, which is three foot. I mean, I'm six foot. So you're starting at a minimum depth, right? of um, heck, um, a metre below the grass. In reality, it's probably going to work out anywhere from one to two metres. So imagine having to put your soak away down three to six foot below the grass. The deeper you go down with a soak away, the worse it is for the water to, or the wastewater to soak away, right? So that is one big, big disadvantage, very low outlet pipe. Another advantage on here is you've got a very high outlet pipe. Very high outlet pipe. So you're literally talking about a foot, a foot and a half below the grass, right? Which means that you soak away if I now if I show you here how much room have I got on there on your soak away let me show you the difference it means the difference from your soak away going here all right because that's where it would go on a low profile tank on the onion tank on the onion tank let me just start that again on the onion tank it would be down here can we still see that yeah you get the point don't you it would be down here i mean and so this space here can be anywhere from where are we from um let me see what did i say so it's going to be about a meter it's going to be about a meter to two meters which is roughly equated to uh yeah i'm right on that actually three to six foot below the grass right for an onion tank soak away 
Right, so there you go. So that is the difference between an onion tank and a bullet septic tank. I mean, there's loads more <laughs> pros to putting a bullet tank in. So if you're going to buy yourself a septic tank, please, 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 please get yourself a low profile one. Don't be conned by thinking that you're going to listen up front. These will cost you about two, maybe 300 quid more than a bullet tank. They will do. And there's no doubt about it. Right. But as I said, you'll make save 200 quid up this end. But you'll lose almost 2,000 quid that end, without a doubt. All right. So that's my advice to you. Take it or leave it. But I'm just, you know, just trying to give you some free advice. All right. So that's the difference between the two tanks. Now, <clears throat> what legalities do you need to know about installing a septic tank? What are the legalities, right? What do you need to know? Right, so let me show you this, right? Let me show you this. Right, so if you want to know out where the rules and regulations are that govern septic tanks, all you need to do is go on .gov website, okay, and type in the general binding rules. Do that on the government website. You do that and um, you'll find out all the information about septic tanks and soakaways on there. All right. So I'm just basic, basically just giving you an overview of this. OK, so on the .gov website, there's only one requirement for septic tanks. And by the way, if you read on the Internet that septic tanks are being banned on the 1st of Jan 2020, it's a load of rubbish, right? Only septic tanks that pollute are in danger of polluting watercourses will be banned. But septic tanks are going to be used for years and years to come. OK, so if you're buying a septic tank, the septic tank must come. Number one. It must have a CE mark, okay? It must have a CE mark with it. And number two, it must have an EN12566-1 certificate. <clears throat> That's all it must have, okay? So... CE mark and an EM1566 certificate. The certificate basically is a government standard which says that um, the government will accept you to put a septic tank in if it conforms to um, these particular requirements, i.e., you know, it's got inlet, it's got an outlet, it's made in a particular way where the solids and the liquids are, are kept within the tank. Um, you know, it can be installed in such and such a way, et cetera, et cetera. They've got certain requirements, right, of, as to the design and how they actually work. And all septic tanks that have got this certificate are fully legal to install in the UK. And those are the only two rules. So there's only two things. Only two things. Only two. In fact, if I qualify what I mean by things. <laughs> things what do i mean by things right all right they're the only two legal requirements now let me explain this to you as well okay so now <clears throat> there's two dates that you need to know as well Ooh, i'll just pick my uh sponge up there all right, so what about if you're looking to replace your septic tank? All right, so do you need to apply for planning, building control? Do you need to tell building control? Do you need to tell the government? Do you need to get your building control officer around? Do you need to apply for planning permission? Well, yes and no, and it depends on two particular dates, okay? So date one, you've got the 1st of Jan, 2015. Now that's a very important date because if your septic tank 
let's put it on here. If you're, well, in fact, let me word it differently. If your property or the land, whether you've just bought it, whether you've lived there for years, if the land, I'll put in brackets, property, you live on, had any type of sewage system on if the land or property you live on had any type of sewage system in it and that could be a bucket literally could have been um septic tank could have been a cesspool could have been a brick built septic tank could have been a sewage treatment plant if before the 1st of Jan 2020, the land or property you live on had any type of sewage system in it or on it, then you can just replace or put a new sewage system in without asking anyone's permission. It doesn't even have to be like for like. So if you've got a brick built septic tank on there and you want to put a plastic one in now, that's fine. If the old septic tank was, I don't know, 100 foot away and now you want to put it, you know, 200 foot away, that's fine. It doesn't matter, right? If your land that you're living on, whether you're buying it, whether you're selling it, whether you've just moved on to it, whether you're putting it in for someone else, if the land or property you live on or are purchasing or whatever had any type of sewage system in it or on it before the 1st of Jan 2015, you do not need, and I'll put this on, and you can see this on the government website, you do not need planning permission. That's a fact. That's not me. Just telling you something to make you feel good. That is a fact, and you can go on the government website, and it's got it in big, bold writing there. You do not need plan permission. You do not need to tell the environmental agency. You do not need to inform building control. You can just go ahead and put one in. If after the 1st of Jan 2015, you're going to put one in, regardless whether it's got had a system on its land or not, if it's after, so if it's on the 2nd of January 2015, you must apply for planning permission. It's as simple as that. So before, no permission needed. You don't need anyone's permission to do it. You don't need to tell anyone. You can just do it, right? If it's after, then you do need to tell building control and you do need to apply for planning permission, okay? So that is that. Now I'm going to give you one more tip. One more tip, and uh, and then I'm going to go out and hopefully enjoy the sun this afternoon. On the 1st of Jan 2020, a whole new load of rules and regulations come into force again. They are called... general binding we've got space for that yeah okay rules okay they're called the general binding rules now certain septic tanks up and down the country after this date will become illegal they'll be banned septic tanks that go directly into a water course will not allow to be do uh, will not be allowed to do so anymore I've done tons of videos showing you how you can make your septic tank legal. So I'm not going to explain and go into all that in this video today. But suffice to say, one thing you can do, and it won't cost you a penny, but it'll save you so much money, is to get yourself a government compliance form. A 
A government compliance form is a form, a template, ma template made by the government, which you should have one in your kitchen or your utility room, and your solicitor should have one. Right? You can see the template on on building regs, right? And it's got certain um, blanks on there that you've got to fill in. You've got to put on what system you've got. How often you have it emptied, the size of it, the capacity of it, um, what repair work you've done to it, how often you've had it maintained, etc., etc. You can either go to Building Race and get one yourself, or, or, and this is why I've made this video because it's a service I used to charge for, but with all these new rules and regulations coming into force, I'm charged for it no longer. If you go to septic tank uk on the top left hand of my website there you'll see how to beat the septic tank ban click it and you can download for free as many government compliance forms as you want for free I'm not going to charge you a penny there's no catch there's no con right and what download at least two right Put one in your utility room, download three if you want, put another in your kitchen, hand one to your solicitor. And when the government inspectors come round, man, they'll be really happy to see that because they'll know that you're a responsible septic tank or sewage treatment plant owner. So there you go. Those are my um, not only my tips for the today, but I hope you now know what a septic tank is. You now know which septic tanks to go for, which not to go for, it's up to you. Go for an onion tank if you want. I'm not, you know, demonizing onion tanks. I'm just saying that if you want to save money and you want to do the job quicker and you don't want things to go wrong, for me personally, bullet septic tanks is the future and the way to go forward. But look, whether you're after a bullet septic tank, a free government compliance form, whether you want free advice, free information, then just go to septictank.co.uk. You'll see loads of free videos there and information and products which will help you understand how septic tanks work. Um, and you'll see, uh, and you'll see brilliant products at great prices that will help you find any solution um, regarding your septic tank issues and problems. So thank you very much for watching this broadcast today. Um, I'm now going to go and uh, enjoy the sun, <laughs> what's left of it. And uh, listen, have a great bank holiday weekend.